So people like, you know, is laughter natural or because, you know, you can get tickled and you don't have to. Hey, Composing Gloves here. And this is a video in the series before we get to bandwidth. This is because someone was watching my bandwidth video and they were like, whoa, bro, man, dude, gloves guy, hold your horses. Like, I'm pretty sure they were like strangling me at the screen. Just kidding. He actually, he was, a, or she, I don't know. I don't even assume anymore. But uh, whoever they were, they, they were really nice. They, they were really nice about it. And they gave me a list of things. They said, you know, I came here expecting to learn some things, some basic things. And you threw out some stuff that is not so basic. I mean, it's not like insanely advanced, but it's definitely not basic uh, for someone who's brand new off the ground getting running. And so they had some fundamental questions. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I, I kind of didn't answer these questions. They are like pretty important questions. So I'm making a video to go before that video to solve this dilemma. This is, these are his questions. He said, what is a bandwidth? This is what he wanted to know. What is a bandwidth? And what do people mean when referring to one in terms of music production? Excellent question. Now, uh, we'll talk we'll talk about this. His grammar is a little funny, like the way you said some of your questions just because of where you are and your understanding right now. Nothing against that. It just helps me understand where you're at. So it's kind of you're really good that you're asking these. Uh, the other ones, how does it affect my music? Excellent question. We'll talk about that. How do I manage bandwidth in my music? So this is a one question that the fact that you asked this um, shows once we answer your first one, I think you'll begin to see how especially after you answer the second one the third one will pretty much be answered so that that's really good and i'm glad that you separated these concepts that means you see them as separate things so you'll look at it a little differently than you would have before so it's a good question to ask and then how do i ask when no how do i ask what the heck how do i understand when i have a problem that is a bandwidth problem if that makes sense at all and again this is another question that will be uh fixed when we get when we answer one and two. So if you get one and two, these other questions will come, but they are sort of separate ideas to be thinking about. Like, what are the implications of bandwidth? That's sort of what these questions are. They're like secretly way more advanced questions that I'm going to sort of try and give you some answers. But these are these last two are deceptively harder to answer if you were to try and definitively answer these. So what is a bandwidth? So first off, the, the basic version of bandwidth is a it is a group of frequencies that's all that bandwidth is so you have i can't believe i didn't say this it's like how did i not say this so you you hear and so we would say that you there you have an audible bandwidth so that would be the frequencies that you can hear the group of them so if you can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz you have the audible bandwidth that would be your bandwidth those are the group of frequencies that you can hear it's sort of weird because I don't know. I had this sort of picture in my head and most filters visualize things in terms of like an actual band. And that was giving me some false impressions about how bandwidth worked when I was first learning. So it's just a group of frequencies and that includes its phase relationships and it's um, obviously the frequencies, the pitch and the uh, amplitude relationship. So that includes all that mumbo jumbo and it becomes important later on in higher level uh, higher level stuff. Like when you get into high level maths and engineering and all sorts of things, bandwidth, when you're dealing with frequencies, contents, electronics, that becomes an important concept. So the other thing that you need to understand about bandwidth is it is technically there are infinite frequencies, right? Technically, like you could go on forever. You could go way past 20, 20 kilohertz and below 20 hertz. You just keep going on and on. And so what is the deal with this? This means that uh, you, that, that's the bandwidth. That's where the term width comes from. We've taken this frequencies and this group of frequencies, the width is, is the frequency we've, we've selected. So that's where that sort of shape comes from. Like, oh, 20 hertz down here. And then we come up because we're including these frequencies. And it's important that there's this slope here. This slope means that we are including the frequencies at the end of our band. So we start at 20 hertz. But what about 21 and 22? Is it like a free, is it, is, are those frequencies immediately included at 20 hertz? And you would be surprised to find that the answers get quite complicated actually, because ideally you would say yes, but this would mean something called a brick wall, um, filter. So it's just, that just means what that, and well, okay, let's keep going here for a second and then we'll come back to this idea. 
So then you include all your frequencies at 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And then you say, I don't want any frequencies above 20 kilohertz because if you're recording stuff up there, that's like unnecessary data in your music. However, that is a hotly debated topic. And then it just cuts off, right? And then after like 20,000 hertz, after 20,001, those aren't included. Now, there are a number of issues. At this point, the, the, they become so sort of complicated that they're separate concepts. So go check out my digital audio basics, which is done in completed, well not completed, I could, I could go back and add a lot more to it, but it's there for the most part what you need to really know about it. The reason I say that is, think about this, if you have a, a and I point this out in the other one, I talk about non-linear filters and linear filters and all sorts of mumbo jumbo a little, just a little bit. I don't believe I talk about it too much, but what happens is, if you were to include it like that, the, the very way we have to record our information, this presents all sorts of problems in changing our signal. So those would be considered, I guess, what you would call bandwidth problems, but they are very technical issues uh, for the more or less. They're not like creative issues. So I want to talk more about the creative issues. The digital audio basics will help you with the technical issues. So they're a group of bands, and right, and right now at this point, you don't really need to worry about what the deal is, uh, but when you have a bandwidth problem, you will have issues with your upper end. For example, aliasing is a common issue. And how do you know what aliasing is? Well, now this is also, this is covered in there, but Citrus, Citrus is really cool in that it allows you to do something. So there is something called oversampling, which essentially in the digital land, what it means is you are able to take your signal and you are able to increase its bandwidth. So normally it's 20 to 20,000 hertz uh, for our audible range. But for digital audio, this won't fly because of the way we have to encode it. And there's all sorts of cool things like the Nyquist theorem and all this cool stuff. But what it is is oversampling allows you to increase it a lot more. So you can fit higher frequencies in your spectrum from all these different issues. So I'm sort of getting into a different topic now, but I just really quick want to show you what aliasing sounds like. So if I were to play some you know, pretty high notes, and let me turn down this. And let me turn on a, uh, let's put down a analyzer too. So here we have an analyzer and it is going to show us something. So as we, as we play some high notes, oh, and let's do this on a saw wave. You see all this stuff right here? That's aliasing. It's got this like noise in it. And I've turned the volume down a lot just so you know, because I already knew what this was going to sound like. But you get all this extra high noise. That's because of the way we've tried to encode our information. What happens is in digital audio, if your bandwidth, if the amount of frequencies you have included to allow it to collect information and then because then you got to collect the information and bring it back to the digital audio. And there's all these ways about representing those those individual frequencies in your bandwidth properly. So I'm throwing a lot of info at you right now, but I just want you to be aware that this is a thing. And what oversampling lets you do is it basically lets you extend your range. So if you play that same note now, it's way cleaner. Like, look at that. There's, if I take this off, like that's the product of aliasing. So that's a bandwidth related issue. Now I'm gonna point you towards digital audio basics. Go check that out. You will understand way more going through there. So that's. That answers your first question, I hope, pretty well. What is bandwidth? And when people bring it up in conversation, it usually gets kind of technical. So you're just going to have to, if you know the basics of digital audio, though, you'll be able to talk uh, very confidently around them because most people get to a basic understanding of digital audio and then stop. I happen to read several more books and I got really into it and it's really cool. And I have like 50 more videos that I would kind of wanted to do for that series. But it's simply, I just don't think most people will, would be very interested in that kind of a thing. So I decided to let it go at, I go, I go a little bit farther than most people do like, but I kind of let it go. So that is bandwidth. Now, how does it affect my music? So you just heard one method, but there is a way more important way that this affects your music. That is the use of effects. So once we, so let's, let's just set aside when you're getting creative, you can set all that junk aside as far as bandwidth is concerned, and you come up with a whole new variety of problems that like didn't even exist before. Those are the creative ones. So when you introduce a plugin, you will notice. So let me break out that other plugin I had. It's uh, the multi fruity multi band compressor. So this thing, right? And then I I showed you. I was like, hey, look at this. We can look at our bands here. See? So here are our bands. So this 
you will see this comment on all compressors. You will see, not all compressors, you will see this comment on a lot of compressors, though. You will see something called either the whole band, the W band, something referencing the entire audio spectrum. Some usually and very commonly it's called the master band, and that's the easiest one to understand. Now, what this allows you to do is uh, look at, so you're looking at the spectrum as a whole, and then what plugins will do is they'll take this whole spectrum. So this graph represents our entire band width, meaning when, they, when we use it in a music production sense, we're talking about the audible spectrum. It does get weird because they could be talking about a, a bandwidth band width exceeding far beyond the spectrum, but only because it influences what we hear in our spectrum. So stuff that we don't hear can influence the way it encodes the stuff that we do hear, therefore changing the way we do hear that. If you do encode it properly and then you have unnecessary high frequencies, there is, uh, there's weird studies where there's actually a lot more brain activity, but no one can tell the difference. Like if you were to ask them and give them a test, like which one is the one with like the higher f frequency content, they can't tell you. Like it's been, they've, they've definitively shown that in several case studies. So it's like, oh, that's interesting. I was reading books that actually had them listed. So if you ask me, can you list them now? Well, those were borrowed books. So unfortunately I can't. But if you go look up some digital audio books, I'm sure you'll come across some really cool things. And I, I cover one of them that I read. So you can go check that one out too. So... Uh, so anyways, it's what the plugin's doing is it's chopping our frequencies up, but you'll notice something and it relates to that whole idea of including frequencies as a brick wall type deal. This, this brick wall idea is a really big idea when it comes to filters, but I didn't bother you guys with it because it's sort of a more advanced. Maybe I'll add in it in at the end of the series or somewhere, somewhere down there. If you really are quite interested about this idea of the brick wall, cause it's, it presents an issue, but what it is is we have to roll our frequencies off and on, and then they have to sum. When we roll them off, we have to make sure that they sum in a way that will restore the signal at the part where we're rolling off so that we preserve our entire band. So you can come up with all sorts of weird issues where you accidentally move things so that you have now created deficient areas in your bandwidth, where certain frequencies you've subdivided your bandwidth into smaller bandwidths, smaller bands. As a result, when you sum them back together, you take all your pieces that you've processed and put them back together, some parts may be louder or softer, and that's, that's the goal, that's what you wanna do, but sometimes you might do things that you didn't intend to do. You might have things that sum in ways you didn't want them to sum. This, people have noticed this in particular with the uh, parametric EQ. They, these, these are these filters are something called all pass filters meaning why they're in this state they let all frequencies through however they still have to go through the filter process as a result they will change your they'll change your sound like it's just an itsy itsy bit like a tiny bit but they still change it and so as a result um people are like oh it changes your sound it's a bad eq blah 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 when in reality they just don't understand that you're running it through filters that they're they're, they're gonna have to buy by the fact that they're you're running your bands you're through these bands through seven of them and they even talk about the way they're arranged and stuff it's uh, it gets kind of advanced but anyways if i were to do this if i now the in eq land well just in any land really bandwidth is also called q and this when i move my band see i'm changing the band width this is called my q and i can selectively change different frequencies differently now I feel like I, uh, you know what, I'm not gonna do a separate. Well, maybe I will do a separate one one day. But as far as the brick wall is concerned, you can't have that because it's an encoding issue. Really, just go watch the digital audio basics, and you'll understand sort of the methods behind it. But filtering wise, they use a mean. There's all these different like ways to create filters digitally, um, and so they in analog too. It's just you can't selectively hit one free. In analog, you simply can't move at the speed of light. You can't just go it's right there you just can't do that digitally you actually can sometimes so they will do that however filters don't do that because they would sound very unnatural uh, the way they roll things off the the way they cut things and many times however and you can't technically just eliminate a frequency unless it's an additive signal other for all sorts of weird reasons but you can reduce it so dramatically that you've essentially eliminated it so again there are a little more involved issues but hopefully you're starting to get it how does it affect my music well they're pretty much every plugin you've ever used like ever uh, is using some form of bandwidth. They're using either the entire band or they're using separate parts of the band. If I open up, they're, they're the fundamentals of filters. Filters are simply what you use to divide the bands. By filtering, you, you take out 
two sides to create a single band. So there's something called, if we come in here, there is a band pass filter, which only lets the, the frequencies in our band actually pass. And so that there's, there's in music production creatively, they are references to basically filters. You're gonna see them mostly in terms, well, pretty much exclusively in terms of filters. That's what filters do. So yeah, so that's how it affects your music. Any effect you ever use ever is gonna do that. Um, okay, so how do I manage bandwidth in my music? Well, that's completely up to you. As you can see, this is a very, very sort of, it gets crazy, man. You go down the rabbit hole and sh good luck coming back. So yeah, it's effects. And this is one thing when you, when you manage it, when, when you ask a question like that, that, that to me just means you were just missing the, some of this fundamental information. So now you've got that. So hopefully you can see, holy frigging crap, like dude. And that's also why people make, like I have a focus right six I six, but people will make a big deal out of the way you encode your signal and they'll get like way fancy preamps and all sorts of junk to ensure that these issues like aliasing and there's other things called nonlinear artifacts and all this sort of stuff that actually in analog domain makes things sound warm and crisp, but in digital domain, we simulate those using, like if you get into Waves plugins, that was one of their big things, was figuring out how to simulate nonlinear artifacts so that you could sound like particular pieces of equipment. And so they were utilizing this. And at the very core, the very core of everything is bandwidth uh, to some extent. It's really kind of an interesting deal. And this also doesn't just apply to uh, music, even though you were asking about that. Oh, my back sort of just hurts right now. I've been sitting too long. I really need to get up and walk around. Uh, the It also applies to like the visual spectrum and other spectrums. They'll, they'll refer to those as bandwidths. So it's kind of an interesting deal. Uh, and then the last question, how do I have a, how do I know when I, how do I understand when I have a problem that is bandwidth problems? Sometimes it's a technical understanding, like aliasing, like you theoretically understand what 16 bit could do for your signal as uh, amplitude wise. And you understand what your sampling rate could do for your signal and uh, bit, bit depth is something that's well, terribly misunderstood these days as well, because people think that like you have to have 16 bits to encode a full to increase your dynamic range that has nothing to do with bandwidth i don't even know why i'm mentioning that amplitude inside a range that that ties to talk about noise and then if, when we get to the noise which is i guess where i'm drawing the connection if you don't have your dithering set up correctly you will introduce distortion which would be a band with related problem that you all that isn't fixed by increasing your bandwidth because that would be impossible what they do is they instead just dither which is randomizing the last ditch the ditch digit and then that fixes that problem but anyway so it's a technical understanding or it's a creative understanding like oh i want to do this with my filters la 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 a lot of people get by without any of this information um but uh, they're just they're not they're very under equipped for a lot of situations and they have no idea how to mix probably at, at all very good if they're doing crap like this like yeah if you you if you want to be gangster or not no then you know that's up to you or whatever but so anyways, I see bandwidth, bandwidth, pretty much, pretty much everything uses bandwidth. Like it's everywhere. It's just everywhere. You'll see it in distortions. Sometimes they have like, some people will split stuff. If you want to get really fancy, you can split stuff into bands yourself using filters and then you can process things individually and then resum them yourself. Um, someone, uh, Seamless R, he does that a lot. It's one of the things he likes to do. So he'll split stuff into different bands, process it. He'll do side processing where you can take your band your bandwidth, if you clone your signal, you essentially have two bands containing the same information and you can spit one, split one, process it, and then sum it with the unprocessed one to do all sorts of manner of weird stuff to your signals. Mixing, that's pretty much what you're doing too. So at the fundamental level, you're kind of messing with it all the time, but hopefully I've given you some dynamic answers that will solve some of these questions. If you have any more questions, you know, let me know, uh, subscribe and have a blessed day. This is going to be taught from two sides. One, I'm going to teach music theory. And in this video, we're going to talk about what music theory is. I guess I'm going to explain exactly what you should expect. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk about what music theory is and why it matters to you. So you have reasons to continue on. And I'm going to be teaching it from two perspectives. So the first one, I guess I'll start with the one that's not very common, is the MIDI. I'm going to be teaching it inside of...